I got Phil. And we're on there. What did we get a page and a half? I think we got through the first chapter. Didn't we? We got through the first paragraph. <laughs> no, we didn't. Oh, we went through. We read through the first chapter. No, we didn't. And then we and then we went back over again, right? Well, yeah. We read the whole chapter one. Okay, going back to the first paragraph of the work. <laughs> one more. Uh, Third. Yeah, once more. Yeah. It certainly seems on reflection, I'm sure you all looked at it last time and reviewed it. It certainly does look like he's talking about the whole philosophy of Plato as a subject and the whole of the sentence. Yeah, I think so. Front, the group, just mm -hmm. over together. Yeah, okay. Now, the test of whether this is the way to read it will, of course, depend upon the further development of this thought because it's going to return to this. But certainly at this point, it certainly seems like the best path. We'll keep the other open as a possibility, but uh, certainly it appears to be the case. So then it would be purified then, right? <laughs> now, perfected. We read chapter one and then we went back. We went all the way to yes. chapter, I chapter read, four. Whether we zoomed, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, certainly there's one idea. Let's make sure we get onto page seven, right? Page seven. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I read it. Bad Boy, I tell you, I wasn't here if we read chapter two. Yeah, I read, well, I read it. Chapter, chapter two, we skipped, skipped two. Two. Skipped skipped two. two. We skipped two. Oh, we skipped two. I wasn't here okay. when we read chapter two. That's two. why I <laughs> <didn't jump there. laughs> Yeah, that's right. We jumped to three. You're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is a theologist? That's right. Because okay, look here. Can you agree? The, uh, yeah, that's right. Parmenides, he's going, this is going back again to Parmenides, where we're, not sure we're going to go. But he talks throughout this work of the gods, and therefore it's important to know what he means by the gods. Would you agree on the top of page 7? All these, therefore, as I have said, called the first and most self-sufficient principles of things Gods. That's what he means by gods. Right? It's not a uh, certainly a Christian concept of a god. Right? It's multiple, though. Right? Yeah, that's right. Because first principles can be multiple. Yeah. Archetypal. Archetypal. Right? So the first, any first or primary self-sufficient principle is by for him to God. Therefore, it can be plural. Now what he means by self-sufficient principles, primary, self-sufficient principles. Primary self-sufficient principles, that's what he means by kinds. Therefore, there are more than one principle governing the universe, but very close self-sufficient principles governs.
Therefore, we can read this as the Parmenides is the whole truth concerning the primary self-sufficient principles. So, what do you say we uh, then quickly rehearse what a theologist is, and a theologist is someone who has a knowledge of primary first or self-sufficient principles. That's a primary principle. If we do that, I would suggest then we go to uh, five and seven. Is that fair? Take a look. So yeah, this is a very curious word that's seldom read. And uh, that's 4th, 5th century AD. Wait. <clears throat> so I would say if we uh, just find out what a theologist is, which I think if we can see the last paragraph of book three, such then according to Plato's decision 
is our theology. And theology is a habit of this kind, which unfolds the hieraxis itself of the gods, the gods being the primary of those principles. And uh, he's got a beautiful footnote on the five paraxis on page six. The summit of any nature or blossom of its essence. Theology is the habit of this kind which unfolds the flowering itself of the, of the first principles or gods. Separates and speculates their unknown and unical light and peculiarity of their participants. Announces it such as are worthy of this energy, which is both blessed and comprehends all things at once. Um, I think you'll agree that drops us in a kind of thought that is really strange for most of Excuse me, all but Paul. make sense of that, since that's the definition of theology, or the theologist. Theology is the habit of this kind which involves the flowering itself of the first principles of the gods. Separates and speculates their own unical life and the clearity of their participants. And is able to discuss that announce it to others worthy of this energy. charge on otherwise, even though it wasn't quite phrased as, as <laughs> one might prefer it to be. Well, all right, if we're going to work, we're going to have to work with the point. Oh, yeah, I can't sneak through that. What were you pointing about? I about. She was holding up the show. And she said, well, you please to go on and And I, I I only said that I didn't understand the passage that we were reading. Um, specifically, I was put, uh, underlining <laughs> the part about separating and speculating their unknown and unical life from the peculiarity of their participants. The almost I don't really understand it at all. But that's the most not understandable part. So I was glancing back and forth from the English to the Greek to the French, and then puzzling my way around. Mm -hmm. Confused and three languages. Confused and three languages. This is a good question in regards to that. My practice. What about? Well, on page eight it says. Yeah. Well, I understand that, but um, but then it looks like it's part of the soul. And on A, it says to be apprehended by the high practice of the soul. Yeah, the highest nature of the soul. So that's. It's not apprehended by the flower of the soul, but it's actually part of the soul. Mm -hmm. thing.
I thought it was a kind of dust three and jump to five and seven, but it looks like we're going to land on three. You want a shortcut through the Yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was hoping on, but... Uh, when we cut through the cemetery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at If Barbara is creating all of that havoc, she should at least read. That's right. Is that... Wait a minute, I'll let Ruth decide. Could you read? Sure, I'll go along with you. All right. Ah. Oh. Hmm. First yes. read it in French, then I English, in then French for Greek. Well, we have a French. It's a linear French and Greek translation. <laughs> totally boring. All therefore that have ever touched upon theology have called things first according to nature. Ah. All therefore that have touched upon theology have called things first according to nature God, and have said that the theological science is conversant about these. And some indeed have considered a co corporeal essence as that alone which has any existence, and have placed in a secondary rank with respect to essence all the genera of incorporeal natures, considering the principles of things as having a corporeal form, and evincing that the habit in us by which we know these is corporeal. But others, suspending indeed all bodies with incorporeal natures, and defining the first, the first hyparxis, to be in soul, and the powers of soul, call as, it appears to me, the best of souls, God. I'm going to read that to you once yeah. more. What, one of the things that's throwing this, hyparxis, the two different images of hyparxis, the summit or the blossom, they seem to be um, very different. In that one, you know, you're talking about the peak in one sense, and you're talking about a, an overflowing kind of an image or a beginning. culmination. Blossom is beginning. Yeah. Someone is they have that? There's a vocabulary. Barb, look at the second page of Xerox in the bottom entry. Uh -huh. Way back at the beginning of your, your book. What do you see in it? It says hypartesis and it gives you a third definition. Good. What definition does it give? The first principle or foundation, as it were, of the essence of the thing. Hence, also, it is the summit of essence. Okay. Oh, the first principle. Okay. It cuts lost mm -hmm. down. <laughs> That's the blossom in the bud. <laughs> Not the next time. Oh, well, no. That makes sense. Well, why are they so, why are they so remote? It's perfection. Well, oh, blossom is the blossom. It's fruit. Oh, the fruit. It's essence. It's, uh, yeah. It's like a full flower. Surely. Full flower. That's right. It's seminally contained in the bud. It's comes from. I like that. I like that image. Right? That's right. Not her damage. Hmm. Yeah. C. C. Flowering. Mm. Beginning of things. Mm. What? What continues is... A first leader, though, doesn't it? It's like... Pardon? High Park, this part of it, if you look at the analog, then where isn't it? Leader, it's leading to it. Mm. I do not know, Ron. It looks to me like it comes from the word for beginning or, or, or for first principle, but I'd have to look at it more clearly. Does anybody know? Arcade. Arcade. Like an arcade? It's from Google. I think it's you. I've seen a sense in which it's used as something that leads to a great undertaking. Mm -hmm. You can. It out. means the citadel. Arcade, I think, means the citadel. That, no, uh, arcade means to begin. Arcade. Also, Ar rule, also a principle. Arcopolis. Arcop means a with a cave. Oh. And, uh, it's good. It's good. Also, uh, uh, arcade with a chi. Good. Why don't you? Arcade with. How about. Make it more clear what it is. In arcade, ain't a logo. In the beginning, was the worst. Yeah, but it's rendered. Rule or principle? Mm -hmm. But not suitable. But but I thought it came. I thought that word 
have that central image as the Citadel of the city. Are you sure not? Is there no relationship between the terms? I think one fell was the Citadel. I'm not asking that. I'm saying, is there no relationship to the terms of you and the I don't think there is. I thought that there was. I thought they were almost identical. Isn't Citadel of the city in the same direction? Mm -hmm. Highest point from which. Mm -hmm. Huh? Well, with that in mind, let me read it again and see what happens. Mm -hmm. All therefore that have ever touched upon theology have called things first according to nature God, and have said that the theological sciences converse into Balthes, and some indeed have considered a corporeal essence as that alone which has any existence and have placed in a secondary rank with respect to essence all the genera of incorporeal nature, considering the principles of things as having a corporeal form, and evincing the habit in us by which we know these, and evincing that the habit in us by which we know these is corporeal. Okay, he rejects that. Okay. Okay. Vision. But others, suspending indeed all bodies from incorporeal nature, and defining the first hypothesis to be in soul, And the powers of soul call, as it appears to me, the best of souls, God, and denominate the science which proceeds as far as to thee, and which knows thee, theology. But such, but such as produce the multiple, but such as produce hmm, but such as produce the multitude of souls from another more ancient principle and establish intellect as the leader of wholes, these assert that the best end is a union of the soul with intellect. Yeah. And consider the intellectual form of life as the most honorable <coughs> of all things. They doubtless too consider theology and the discussion of intellectual essence one and the same. All these Therefore, as I have said, call the first and most self-sufficient principle of things God. And the <coughs> science respecting these, theology. Right, so three viewers, and the end of the last of them. The divine narration, however, of Plato alone despises all corporeal natures with reference to principles, because indeed everything divisible and endued with, endued with interval is naturally unable either to produce or preserve itself, <coughs> but possesses its being, energy, and passivity through soul and the motions which soul contains. But Plato demonstrates that the psychical essence, that is the essence preserved, pertaining to soul, is more ancient than body, but is suspended from an intellectual conversation. <coughs> For everything which is moved according to time, though it may be self-moved, is indeed of a more ruling nature than things moved by others, but is posterior to an eternal motion. He shows, therefore, as we have said, that intellect is the father and cause of bodies and souls, mm -hmm. and that all things both subsist and energize about it, which are allotted a life conversant with transitions and evolutions. <coughs> Plato, however, oh, proceeds... Oh, isn't it fair, I didn't even ask any questions so far, be able to ask them? Absolutely. I can see why you're saying the, <coughs> the image of blossoming as well as ruling is a good one. Yeah. Mm. Seminal, seminal uh, flowers. Mm -hmm. So the first one is the second. Um, I 
looks like the first I practice is the insole and also in the palate. I don't know the language one. Ask Barbara. She, she's doing so well. Then I can hear. Yeah. Come on. Barbara, what do you think? It looks good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
okay, right? Okay. Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Can I just ask a quick question here on what is meant by the proposed, must propose to itself such a kind of energy? On page six and about the middle of the spot right there. He must establish himself in a firm, immovable, and safe kind of divine knowledge, and must be persuaded not to admire anything else, nor even to direct his attention to other things, but must hasten to divine light with an intrepid reasoning energy and with the power of an unwearied life, and in short, must propose to himself such a kind of energy, and rest as it becomes him to possess, who intends to be such a cor corpus as Socrates describes in the Such a what? I don't know. What is that word? Where are you? Page, Page six, 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 top paragraph. <coughs> Can you go there? Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's you were. Sorry. <laughs> I, we I enjoyed it, though. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Cory Feiler. You were at the top of page. What's a Cory Feiler? You were in chapter two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who? And I'd like, I'd like yeah, to wonder what he's proposing. Is that to reason it to himself? Or what is this proposed mean? Is this energy? We have to ask you to be judicious now. Why don't you really just <laughs> why don't you take a new time and say what he does? You skipped me. chapter two. Uh -huh. That's where I am. <laughs> if you're going to chapter <laughs> three, it's offensive. <laughs> it's not going to make any sense unless I'm tagging along. So let's stop fooling around and go back to what you skipped. Is that your, is that what you want to do? Sure. I yeah, but you're that. letting me say uh, it. Well, I don't want to to steer the ship, you know, in the opposite direction. Pardon me. Are you? <laughs> I've already done so. You've just done it. We're just trying to justify it. Yeah, I didn't realize it. I was doing it. She's doing it. She's. I don't want to go. Well, I don't want to go. But I did. I did. I did. I did. Okay. I don't want to go in that direction. <laughs> we have gone nowhere. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. She says. Okay, I'm still in the first paragraph. Yeah, Honestly, I think I just finished reading through that. <laughs> We're on our way out of it. I'm sorry. You're sorry? Yeah, because I just, like I said, it wasn't intentional that I, um, you know, decided to, to stay in chapter two. I just was reading hey. and I got caught up and I, I thought, oh, we're all finished this. We're moving on to something else. And so I, that's why I brought it out. And no one has yet answered. I thought maybe that could be just a quick answer. Someone could tell me what that word means. But you just didn't ask what that word meant. I remember that. Didn't what she did read a whole section? Or did you, whole section? Because you, you asked me to. So well, I wonder who did that. Hear the word I did that. Good God. That's <laughs> terrible. I don't like big uh, All right. Come on. Now. Okay. Really, no. If you're saying you found that there's part of the second chapter meaningful and we skipped it, right. or, or do you think that we should go back and then get there, stop the one and read it rather than the Is that what you're finding? Okay. If so, hold the position. There's no one here, I think, who would take offense with that. Well, I know we went through part of that, didn't we? No. No? no. We went directly from one to three. One was too skipped. Because we, it's an even number. 
Yeah, we figured the yeah, even numbers in this work were just fillers. <laughs> we're just fillers between the odds, and therefore we can ignore them. <laughs> but you have two yeah, out there. Have to go to seven. Yeah. One, two, three, five. Just to let you know, know that we're aware. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look at it. How are you going to decide this? Ruth's problem? idea is a wonderful idea. Think it's a wonderful idea? Yes, I do. Look, see, you got a colleague, Ruth. Got Nancy on your side now. At least someone's on my side. Well, okay. Now, how are we going to decide? Let's take a vote. We vote democracy. Or should we just let the other vote? Well, I Let's oh, can King decide. We're going to go down. We might as well go to the extreme. We don't want to go. Let the let the best best rule to figure out something to come in the best. We can go by meritocracy. How about if see chapter one is so short? You have the crystal. Look at this. Look at this. Heresy. Heresy. We started with anarchy and now we go into heresy. <laughs> we right. just quickly read through that and go into chapter two. There's you mean you'd like to start you over? Know. I'm leaving in front well, of well, That's fair. <laughs> Look here. If we start over, wouldn't it be fair that Nancy reads the first chapter and Ruth the second? Yes. Yes. I mean, if they want us to go back to all of us, Ruth. I think it's a good idea. It's just that kind of thing. These two are not. Pardon? We are, we are still using the old standard if we get if the real oh, yes. question. Oh, oh yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> you can always read the table of contents. Yeah, sure. <laughs> of okay, I'm for it. If, if you, you know. Chapter okay. one. Well, Sorry, Nancy, you want to do it then? Okay. All right. Then Ruth through the second, Roger do the third, and we'll have a sweet time, the rest of us, sitting by and following. Let us start our hypothesis again. Or we could always just have Roger do the second. We could go in harmony. One. Let us return for the third time. This is the third time. Sounds answer. like Parmenides. <laughs> 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 okay, I brought my. I can be the dearest of friends. I like that. I am of opinion that the whole philosophy of Plato was at first unfolded into light through the bene beneficent will of superior natures. Now wait a minute. We going back to the beginning? <laughs> yes. <You got it. laughs> <Yay! laughs> yes, <Dad. laughs> Well, he was out in the kitchen. <laughs> and he was out in the kitchen, and the mood was carried by a voice boat. That's oh. silly. What, yeah, I but. beg your pardon? Mm -hmm. yeah. We're just going to read through Go one quickly. All right. Very slowly. Quick. Okay. Exhibiting read through one quickly. the intellect yeah, right. concealed in them, and the truth subsisting together with beings to souls conversant with generation. So far, it is lawful for them to participate of such supernatural and mighty good. And again, that afterwards, having received its perfection, returning as it were into itself, and becoming unapparent to many who profess to philosophize, and who earnestly desired to engage in the investigation of true being, it again advanced into light. Hmm, okay. But I particularly think that the mystic doctrine respecting divine concerns, which is purely established on a sacred foundation and which perpetually subsists with the gods themselves, became thence apparent to such <coughs> as are capable of enjoying it for a time through one man whom I should not err in calling the primary leader and hierophant of those true mysteries into which souls separated from terrestrial places are initiated, and of those entire and stable visions which those, participant part which those participate who genuinely embrace a happy and blessed life. <coughs> but this philosophy shone forth at first from him so venerably and arcanely 
as if established in sacred temples and within their adyata, and being unknown to many who have entered into these holy places in certain orderly periods of time, proceeded as much as was possible for it into light through certain true priests and who embraced a life corresponding to the tradition of such mystic concerns. It appears likewise to me that the whole place became splendid and that illuminations of divine spectacles everywhere presented themselves to the view. These interpreters of the mystic speculations of Plato who have unfolded to us all sacred narrations of divine concerns and who were allotted a nature similar to their leader I should determine to be the Egyptian Plotinus and those who received the theory from him I mean Amelius and Porphyry together with those in the third place who were produced like feral statues from these is Jamblicus and Theodorus and other and any others oh, who after these following this divine choir have energized about the doctrines of Plato with a divinely inspired mind from these he who after the gods has been our leader to everything beautiful and good receiving in an undefiled manner the most genuine and pure light of truth in the bosom of his soul made us a partaker of all the rest of Plato's philosophy communicated to us that arcane information which he had received from those more ancient than himself and caused us in conjunction with him to be divinely agitated about the mystic truth of divine concerns to this man therefore should we undertake to return thanks adequate to the benefits which we have received from him the whole of time would not be sufficient but if it is necessary not only that we should have received from others the transcendent good of the platonic philosophy but that we should leave to posterity monuments of those blessed spectacles of which we have been spectators and emulators to the utmost of our ability under a leader the most perfect of the present time and who arrived at the summit of philosophy perhaps we shall act properly in invoking the gods that they will enkindle and kindle the light of truth in our soul and in supplicating the attendants and ministers of better natures to direct our intellect and lead it to the all-perfect divine and elevated end of the platonic theory <clears throat> for I think that everywhere he who participates in the least degree of intelligence will begin his undertakings from the gods and especially in explications respecting the gods for we can no otherwise be able to understand a divine nature than by being perfected through the light of the gods nor divulge it to others unless governed by them and exempt from multiform opinions and the variety which subsists in words preserving at the same time the interpretation of divine names Knowing therefore this, and complying with the exhortation of the Platonic Timaeus, we in the first place establish the gods as leaders of the doctrine respecting themselves. But may they in consequence of hearing our prayers be propitious to us, and be benignantly approaching, guide the intellect of our soul, and lead it about the Vesta of Plato, and to the arduous sublimities of the speculation where when arrived we shall receive all the truth concerning them and shall obtain the best end of our parturian conceptions of divine concerns desiring to know something respecting them inquiring about them of others and at the same time as far as we are able exploring them ourselves Paragraphs. <laughs> right. Certainly will help 
anyone has a question about it, but we have that, so. Well, I was doing this quickly, remember. Because Mark is silent about this matter. Restoration, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Could I ask the question? Is this sort of like a, a introductory prayer that give us, you know, enough wisdom to be able to find the truth of? what we're going to encounter in the following chapters. Is that what this is all about? Mm -hmm. Is that what the essence of it is? The invocation? Sure. <coughs> the only thing I don't understand is, are you supposed to just get it from the reading, or is there something internal that's supposed to come out of us that's there to <coughs> help us? reach this type of divine nature. Yeah, well, one, one thing is clear, and that is that uh, whatever else is necessary, understanding is, is paramount, or central to the whole undertaking. <coughs> um, there's more of being suggested there. Isn't there an answer? Well, what are you looking for? The role of understanding? Yes, beyond, beyond understanding. Mm -hmm. Divinely agitated. <coughs> what do you do with <coughs> seven lines from the top of three? He's got a hierarchy there, doesn't he? Oh, it's like the ladder and the... It's like the ladder and the symposium. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let me hear you. Tell us what you're saying. Perhaps we shall act properly in invoking the gods, that they will enkindle the light of truth in our soul, and <coughs> supplicating the attendants and ministers of our <coughs> natures to direct our intellect and lead it to the all-perfect, divine, and elevated end of the Platonic theory. For I think that everywhere he who participates in the least degree of intelligence will begin his undertakings from the gods, and especially in explications respecting the gods. For we can no otherwise be able to understand the divine nature than by being perfected through the light of the gods. Not divulge it to others <laughs> unless governed by them. To do it. And exempt from multi-form opinions and the variety which subsists in words, preserving at the same time the interpretation of divine names. Um, they're divulged to others that must governed by them. I don't understand what that means. No, well, don't worry about it. Just do the first part, and I'll do the second. <laughs> Uh, yeah, deal with from the four, I think. Uh, sure. Four things. Yeah, just go that way. <laughs> well, you just define what the gods were there, right? No. Previously, self sufficient principles. You know, before you, why don't you read again? Four, okay. I think. Four, I think that everywhere he who participates in the least degree of intelligence 
will begin his undertakings from the gods, and especially in explications respecting the gods. Right. right, begin from the undertaking, especially in explications <laughs> respecting the gods. Go ahead. But we can no otherwise be able to understand a divine nature than being perfected through the light of the gods. Then by the divine nature. Then by being perfected through the light of the gods. Mm -hmm. Nor, Nor divulge it to others unless governed by them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that line of the God's image is in the first paragraph, isn't it? I am of the opinion of the whole philosophy of Plato was at first unfolded into life through the beneficent will of superior natures. Mm -hmm. So this is the will here. There's that will isn't there, you can't explain it to anyone else. That the whole of the philosophy of Plato was at first unfolded into life to the back symbol of the spirit of people, exhibiting the intellect concealed in them, and the truth subsisting together with them. Again, to souls conversant with the source or generation. And again, afterwards, Having received its perfection, philosophy of Plato, returning as it were into itself, becoming unapparent to many who profess to all souls, and the earnestly desire to engage in the investigation of true being, it again advanced into life. saying that the philosophy of Plato was unfolded into life from the uh, beneficent world of superior natures. And the philosophy of Plato exhibited the intellect which uh, previously had been concealed in them. So the philosophy of Plato is the, in one sense, Manifestation of the intellect of superior beings. So it's allowing of uh, of them to be seen. Yeah, the intellect seen. Yeah. Wasn't that about the the first that people <laughs> they also first got into the mind? Wasn't that right at that time that that started happening? That's the first time it was in print. Yeah, or one of these. Yeah, from Yeah, that whole period of time. Mm -hmm. okay. And after it's having received its perfection, returned as it were into itself. So it does come off from time to time. Right? Yeah, it comes in and yeah. yeah. So, going back to where we were. So, it comes, does it come out then with, with those who are, who earnestly desire to be? Is that when that light comes out again? Yeah, it okay, I can dance in the light. Yeah, like the, uh, the pure understanding of, of the Parmenidean word. Whatever principles that are formerly were pure intellect. I'm saying that was disclosed through Christ. And when recovered, it was the very mm -hmm. means of being perfected.
It follows the same Pythonian model then of overflowing and returning upon itself. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Because it's divulged mm -hmm. and it causes it's people itself. to wake up their own intellect, mm -hmm. which returns back upon the source of the principles, and so the circle is complete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Perfected as it were. Yeah, that's right. How's, how's that all? Yeah. Is through an individual's desire for truth, or is there some higher will you know, shedding the light? <laughs> yeah, I don't see too much desire being sufficient. It's well, like intellect that, understanding, doesn't it? Well, the last time I thought we explained that um, by saying there was some kind of higher uh, soul or God that yeah. unfolded into life. But just before, it sounded like someone said that had more of uh, it. That you know, how does that how does that fire God or whatever relate to the intellect? It is. It is the intellect. It is the intellect. Individual. It is the intellect. An individual. Yes. That's answering without helping. You. Kind of like asked a yes or no question. Yeah. Is it I always appreciate those, by the way. Don't shame me. <laughs> oh, well, is, it, is it an individual? This will be another yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Give him several choices. Yeah. <laughs> Check you can't have an open-ended question. You can make it open. <laughs> <laughs> Always like all of the above. Who are, right. the, who are the superior natures? Intellect. Right. right. Intellect. Archetypal. Self-sufficient. Who's intellect? Hmm? Who's intellect? Or just the intellect? Intellect. Intelligence. The intelligence that is in all human beings? And pardon me, in what? Such as in all what? All human beings. Or Are you asking what is the intellect? Yeah. Is intelligence that is separated from each individual? Or is it, is it something, something like a tent over Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. <laughs> It's more like yeah, it's much like a tent. That's overall. The sail, right. isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not by like a sun, but by the day. It's nature. Not like a was it Plato who had the, no, it was Socrates who used it, said it was like a sail. No, like a sun. No, no, no. So that would be nature. Parmenides used it. Yeah. yeah. I well, do we disguise it by saying you guys are too fast. <laughs> 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 It's like the Astrodome. <laughs> is it something that is there, or is it something that has to be worked on? Like in the class, you would say mind training. Mind right. training is something you must work on to achieve a certain intellect. The intellect isn't just developed. It's something that you have to work on to get there. It's probably, probably that you have to work on something else. Well, it it was getting rid of, maybe getting rid of ignorance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I meant. You know, well, it would help if you fall in love. Yeah. It would help if you fall in love. <laughs> it always helps me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm the the heart. Heart. That's right. <laughs> 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 Room one, right to the heart five. of a good love. Five. Five. Come on, we're we're in reading. Come on. She's okay, got a page five. five. I knew she'd get the page. For the apprehension of this theory, a better assistant... That was her part, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. That was her part. Go ahead, Ruth. You're in. A better assistant than love cannot be obtained. Fine. Go ahead. Why don't you start over? Take chapter two. It's yours. Oh, okay. Sorry, start from the beginning. She wanted to start in the middle. She's going to read the pages all day. Now that we get out of the preface. All right. Go ahead. And thus much by way of preface. And thus much. But it is necessary that I should unfold the mode of the supposed doctrine. Mm -hmm. The mode. 
what it is requisite to expect it will be in defining the, the preparatives which a hearer of it ought to possess, that being properly adapted, he may approach not to our discourses, but to the intellectually elevated and deific philosophy of Plato. For it is proper that convenient aptitudes of auditors should be proposed according to the forms of discourses, just as in the mysteries, those who are skillful in concerns of this kind previously prepare receptacles for the gods, and neither always use the same inanimate particulars, nor other animals, nor men, in order to procure the presence of the divinity, but that alone out of each of these, which is naturally capable of participating divine illumination, is by them introduced to the proposed mystic rites. The present discourse. Not well. Well, okay. well, don't you make that rule that we hold uh, for each paragraph. Um. You. The right part to the right to the dog. Right. Right. Okay, you know, we're just lost. <laughs> <laughs> where was, where was your love? Uh, right. It's coming up. She's, she's the end of page we five. We did mention mystic rites, though, right? Mystic rites, that's part of it? So now that's we're going to continue. Right oh, you're okay. taking love out of the symposium, is that? No, no, it's right here. I'm not going to She'll it. get there. She, she's promised. Okay. okay, shall I skip the second? No! <laughs> not after you made us go back through it. Come on, every paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> this girl, I don't know what we're going to do with it. <laughs> the present discourse, therefore, Good. will first of all be divided by me into three parts. In the beginning, considering all those common conceptions concerning the God, which Plato summarily delivers, together with the power and dignity everywhere of theological axioms. But in the middle of this work, speculating the total orders of the God, enumerating their peculiarities, defining their progressions after the manner of Plato, and referring everything to the hypotheses of theologists. And, in the end, speaking concerning the gods, which are in different places celebrated in the Platonic writings, whether they are supermundane or mundane, and referring the theory respecting them to the total genera of the divine orders. In every part of this... Oh, wait, wait, what's the three parts she's dividing? The three? first part is the beginning, common conceptions and theological axioms. The second one, speculating the total orders and hypotheses of theologists. And the last is concerning the God and uh, referring to a theory to the total genera of the divine order. Celebrated. A total right. picture. By the way, occasionally we will need someone to remember those three parts. That'll be your job. Right? Oh, so I've you got just it quote that. Myself. We'll just quote that. Okay, go ahead. <coughs> In every part of this work, likewise, we shall prefer the clear, distinct, and simple to the contraries of these. And such things as are delivered through symbols, we shall transfer to a clear doctrine concerning them but such as are delivered through images, we shall transmit to their exemplars. Such things, too, as are written in a more affirmative way, we shall examine by causal reasoning. But such as are composed through demonstrations, we shall investigate, and besides this, explain the mode of truth which they contain, and render it known to the hearers and of things enigmatically proposed, we shall elsewhere discover perspicuity, not from foreign hypotheses, but from the most genuine writings of Plato. But with respect to the things which immediately occur to the hearers, 
Of these we shall contemplate the co consent with things themselves. And from all these particulars, one perfect form of the Platonic theology will present itself to our view, together with its truth, which pervades through the whole of divine intellections, and the one intellect which generated all the beauty of this theology and the mystic evolution of this theory. Such, therefore, as I have said, will be my present treatise. Wow. What an undertaking. A lot of promises. A lot of promises. <laughs> How's that? All right? Make a footnote. Mm -hmm. We want to know where the promises are. We These are the promises. Good. By the way, what are they? Um, the first promise yeah. is um, clear clarity of doctrine. The second is um, examples. The third is causal reasoning. The fourth is investigation of the mode of truth, an explanation of the mode of truth. I like the way you simplify it. <laughs> I'm thinking others are not appreciating it because I hear mumbling. The mode of truth. Wow. Yeah, that's excellent. You got it really summarized, don't you? And uh, the discovery of perspicuity of all things. Can we substitute perspective? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that, is that a good one? Because it's simpler. Oh, we'll get a new perspective from all this. Yeah. Like That's that. the idea of the whole thing is to get it clear. Mm -hmm. One perfect form. Well, that's what we're coming to. More thaws than brick shit out. It's got quite a list, doesn't it? Well, he's really biting off a bunch of them, doesn't it? What's in symbols, he's going to be clear about it. All right. What has images, he will give models. What is affirmed, he'll examine by causal reason. Demonstrations, he'll investigate. And in doing so, he'll explain the word of truth they contain and pass it on to the hearers. Oh, now there's a principle about that, isn't there? About the God. And the things that are puzzling, we will discover their yeah. perspective. And all of that will come from the most genuine writings. You can just take that one side that will have clear, distinct, simple, clear doctrine, the models, causal reasoning, based upon investigation and demonstration. All the whole thing will explain the truth that they present to us. This puzzling will be first to do this. Yeah. I can't wait till you finish the paragraph. Yeah, that's really, that's and that's great. No, 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 no. And from all these particulars. Oh. And from all these particulars, one perfect form of the Platonic theology will present itself to our view, together with its truth, which pervades through the whole of divine intellection. And the one intellect which generated all the beauty of this theology and the mystic evolution of this theory. 
such therefore as I have said will be my further treatise. But, but the auditor of the proposed dogmas is supposed to be adorned with the moral virtues and to be one who has bound by the reason of virtue all the illiberal and inharmonious motions of the soul and harmonize them to the one form of intellectual prudence. For, as Socrates says, it is not lawful for the pure to be touched by the impure, but every vicious man is perfectly impure, and the contrary character is pure. He must likewise have been exercised in all the logical methods, and have contemplated many irre irreprehensible conceptions about analyses, and many about divisions, the contraries to these, agreeably as it appears to me, to the exhortation of Parmenides to Socrates. For prior to such a contest in arguments, the knowledge of the divine genera and of the truth established in them is difficult and impervious. But in the third place, he must not be unskilled in physics. For he who has been conversant with the multiform opinions of physiologists and has, after a manner, explored in images the causes of beings, will more easily advance to the nature of separate and primary essences. <clears throat> An auditor, therefore, of the present work, as I have said, must not be ignorant of the truth contained in the phenomena, nor unacquainted with the paths of erudition and the dis disciplines which they contain. For through these, we obtain a more immaterial knowledge of the divine essence. But all of these must be bound together in the leader intellect. Being likewise a partaker of the dialectic of Plato, meditating those immaterial energies which are separate from corporeal and corporeal powers and desiring to contemplate by intelligence in conjunction with reason true being. Our auditor must genuinely apply himself to the interpretation of divine and blessed dogmas and fill his soul according to the oracle, with profound love. Since, as Plato somewhere observes, for the apprehension of this theory, a better assistant than love cannot be obtained. Could I ask you what that means, being likewise a partaker of the dialect of Plato? Are they referring to the leader intellect? The word before, but all of these must be bound together in the leader intellect. Are they talking about a person or a, a mind being a leader intellect? What does that mean? You know? And there, what I think it means is there's intellect, and then there are those who have into, an intellect. Is that like a have guru intellect. or someone who leads the pack? No. Unless it's the higher thing, I don't think it means. An auditor, therefore, of the present work, as I have said, must not be ignorant of the truth contained in phenomena, One. nor unacquainted with the paths of erudition Two. and the disciplines which they contain. Three. 
For through these we obtain a more immaterial knowledge of the divine essence. But all these, but all these must be bound together in the leader intellect. All these must, must be found in the intellect. Mm. Like the one? Yeah. 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 Must all be. Mm. Even though, True. even though, well, it would be the pinnacle, right? You know, it's an immaterial knowledge. Right? So through these we obtain a more immaterial knowledge of the divine essence. All of these together, bound together, is in the one we mm. Because all of those are going to play a role in the hypotheses, or in the primaries. They're all bound together. Mm. And that's why it's called the leader, because it binds together? No, it just subsumes. Normally, the auditor, the auditor therefore, the person who works as I said, must not be ignorant of the truth contained in the phenomenon. Like in the time in, so that's the study of the phenomenon, right? It's a likely story. Mm -hmm. It's still worthy of seeing the order in nature. He goes up a step, nor unacquainted with the paths of erudition to and the disciplines they contain. Why? Well, because we have to more internal knowledge of the essence. Then, had we never been engaged in it at all, But all of those contain some aspect of the intellect, don't they? Understand the intellect? What does er erudition mean? No, so that's like, learning. then that would go back to the proposed to himself, if you're doing that stuff to himself about the matter. Like having done the high A good one. A good one, Debbie. <laughs> Yeah. One high probably school. high school will get you probably very one where you can learn Latin and Greek. High school, yeah. high school will get you very addition. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Only if they can be walked bound together in the intellect. Yeah. Right. And the next step is like right being likewise a partaker of the dialectic. No, well, high school won't do that. Uh, don't they have clubs over there? Yeah. The dialectic club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Dialectic club. Well, the the I think it's a team <laughs> sport. Where the green dance. Got a Letterman jacket. Yeah. Dialectic. <laughs> 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 oh. Watch now. There's a progression. Come on, pick it up from that. Wow, copy as well. Uh, yeah. From the dialectic one. Where are we beginning? Being likewise. Being likewise a partaker of the dialectic of Plato. One. Meditating those immaterial energies which are separate from corporeal powers. Two. And desiring to contemplate by intelligence in conjunction with reason, true yeah, being. Our auditor must genuinely apply himself to the interpretation of divine and blessed dogmas, and fill his soul, according to the oracle, with profound love. Since as Plato somewhere observes, for the apprehension of this theory, a better assistant in love cannot be found. Mm, Right, so it's going up all the way, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Step, mm -hmm. step, 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 step. Immaterial means non-material. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, she got that bar and she, she rested. That's ended it. I mean, her voice fell. She got melodious and it's wonderful and warm. Cheer her on. Cheer her on. Yeah. Come on, Leah. You're, you're doing really great. Mark, she needs encouragement. Come on, Ken. Come on, Ken. Come on, Ken. Come on, Ken. Okay, come on, there we go. He must likewise be exercised in the truth, which pervades through all things, and must excite his intelligible eye to real and perfect truth. He must establish himself in a firm, immovable, and safe kind of divine knowledge, and must be persuaded not to admire anything else, nor even to direct his attention to other things, but must hasten to divine light with an intrepid reasoning energy and with the power of an unwearied life, and in short, must propose to himself such a kind of energy and rest as it becomes him to possess, who intends to be such a corpheus as Socrates describes in Theotius. Such then is the magnitude of our hypothesis, and such the mode of the discourses about it. Before, however, I enter on the narration of the things proposed, I wish to speak about theology itself, its different modes, and what theological forms Plato approves and what he rejects. That these being previously known, we may more easily learn in what follows the auxiliaries of the demonstrations themselves. Okay. What's the last step then? You can get help from Bob and Mark, they were working on this time. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
I did it to my car. <laughs> Where are the text are characteristics? Do you see that at a certain point in the text? Yeah. He must likewise be exercising the truth for the things to all things, and this society is intelligible by to the real and perfect truth. He must establish himself in a firm, immovable, and safe yeah. kind of divine knowledge, and be persuaded not to admire anything else, or even to direct his attention to other things, but must hasten to divine life with an intrepid reason and energy, and the power of an unwearied life. Kind of like a lion experience. A lot of that. And what are you saying about that? Just directing. actually comes from the word for head. Yep. You must understand Bob is a little bit shy, intrepid, and the reason for this is that just over a bottle of beer tonight, he was expounding on the nature of bravery. <laughs> and you know, a couple of us were mad as hell we didn't passage, hear that comment. Yeah. But this very passage has similarities to this quote that he was going about bravery. Well, I'm glad you know where to dig the gold. Pride had had a certain power necessary in abiding in a certain state. The same structure he was remarking is present in this work. But now, because he's helping you, he's lost his memory. Your charm overwhelms him. Look, his memory is gone. He's befuddled. Before he was eloquent over beer. Mark had it. Mark had to just, you know, give him the elbow all the time during the beer because he was dominating the discussion. His eloquence was Well, gone. let's bring out the beer. Yes. I guess it's Mark. It's almost time. It's for you. That's right. <laughs> Quick, give him a glass of beer. Is there anything similar, Bob? Uh, this is kind of a similar idea about preserving. Oh, what do you say there? Oh, my gosh. Must remain All firm. right. Okay, go for it. Establish yourself in a firm, immutable, safe kind of divine knowledge. All right. Safe, close to. Dangerous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And shouldn't admire anything else. Uh, or even just <coughs> direct his attention toward the things. So uh, a brave person. Is he preserving his power or energy for any purpose in this writing? Or direct his uh, yeah, it's um similar structure then? Yeah. Okay. To gain perfect truth. Well or or divine knowledge. Put your attention on that rather than other other kinds of things. Oh, the power of unmarried life. Yeah. Doing that's the secret. That's what's avoided. You avoid that. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Conserve, therefore, the power. Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. My gosh. It is that. We know about it. Six of flying good sun. I have to look at you. I just thought that meant that life could always be exciting. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Life could always be exciting. Recognizing the re truth and reality. Uh, if you. Uh, so it's not going to work. Well, 
But the power of an unwary life does not mean that an unwearied life will conserve power. In other words, not smoking or anything. No, on the contrary. It how you do it. Yeah. With what attitude? There's a power in it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.